Hey guys, it's me again, you know who I am, and today I'm going to show you how to spawn in the Gauntalist and the, and the Hydralist, as well as their tactics and how to beat them. So first off, uh, there is a bounty in that Kanzu has in Cetus that's called Eidolon Hunt, Terralist, Gauntalist, and Hydralist. Now you actually do not need to take this bounty in order to spawn these guys in. This will help you organize things as well as it will tell you what stage you're on and uh, stuff like that. So. Oh no, it's not a bad idea to take this, uh, but you, you just so you know, you don't have to if you don't want to. Next, is this step is very important. So what you have to do is fight the Terrorless. Now you have to capture him. And you're probably wondering, well, why do I have to capture him? You need his loot in order to spawn the next Eidolon. And the same goes for the Gauntless. You need his loot to spawn in the Hydralist, so on and so forth. Now don't worry, you'll get your stuff back in twofold, I believe. So you have stuff to show for it, but what you need from the Terralist is his brilliant Eidolon Shard. You need that, so otherwise you can not spawn those guys in and you fail. So next, what you want to do is, after you've done capturing the Terralist, you need to go to the shrine, though before this stage you should probably grab lures, and you need three of them instead of two this time. Uh, but after that, what you need to do is... Go to the shrine. It's located in the big lake or Cetus, where typically Norg spawn. Uh, but you need to take your brilliant shards and place them on the shrine. Now, everybody in your party has to do this. It can't just be one person sacrificing it for the whole team or whatnot. It has to be every single person in your party. Don't worry. Don't worry. If you do successfully defeat the next Eidolon, which is the Gauntalist in this case, you do get your shards back and you'll get them, get other goodies as, as well. Now the next step is now you have to capture the Gantalist. This is also important as you cannot spawn the Phidolon, final Eidolon without capturing this one. Now, unlike the Terralist, he requires three lures to capture, not two, because unlike the Terralist having four weak spots, the Gauntalist has six weak spots. And the new weak spots are his collarbones, so you have to shoot them there and they kind of glow, though they're not too obvious. Now thankfully, lures have become much easier to manage. They teleport when they're really far away, and they have waypoint markers over their heads. And those markers will change color from yellow to blue when they are fully charged. Also, this has been in the game for a while, but if you kill a Vomvalis, you don't need a lure uh, nearby to actu actually capture its soul and charge a lure. What you can do is, so the Vomvalis will drop a little turquoise orb. What you do is you pick you pick that up when they die, and your Warframe or your Operator or whatever will start flashing blue. It doesn't matter what form you're in, you can switch forms and still carry the soul, uh, but you'll start flashing blue. Once you start flashing blue, go ahead and go to a lure and touch it, and that will give it the soul, partially charging it, uh, just as if the lure was nearby. Now, the Gauntalus has new variations on the Terrorless attacks, like his stomp can be one of two attacks, either lasers that shoot from the ground, or he'll do the Terrorless knockdown stomp, but it'll be in a three-round burst, and he'll do that several times. He can also shoot those same lasers from the sky, becoming a giant Mirage's prism. He will also use the Shield Whale a lot more often than the Terralist, making the damage phase a bit frustrating. His Whale, instead of buffing the nearby Vomvalis, will create a shield around him. Now, if you're in Shield phase, he will only be damageable on the head. So this is where, if you have a T2 amp, you're using your shotgun amp, this is where it's going to struggle a bit because it kind of barely reaches his head. And even when it does, it does pretty low damage. So that's when, if you have the... T1 scaffold, which is the little rail gun. That's when you want to switch, uh, start using that to do damage to his shields, because uh, that will do quite a bit of damage to his head, uh, and it will actually be able to reach him. Now, if you're in damage phase while he creates the shield, don't worry, he'll be damageable like normal. His weak spots will be damageable like normal. It's not like he'll lock off weak spots, so don't worry too much about that when you're in damage phase. So what you want to do is burst him down, burst down his shield before he can even use that attack, and that that attack won't become nearly as bad as it will. After defeating the Gauntalus, he will drop a Radiant Eidolon Shard, which is worth 40,000 focus, which is, in my opinion, that's a bit too low. I think it should be at least 50,000, if not 75,000, but that's just my opinion. And he'll also drop several other goodies. Now, he also drops the event 120% puncture mods. So that's also something you want to look up to if you're wanting to farm those puncture mods. 
this is the way to do it. Now you have to repeat the same process to spawn the Hydralisks, only instead of uh, sacrificing brilliant Eilon Shards, you have to sacrifice your Radiant Eilon Shards. Uh, though, before you do this, I would advise you to grab three Root Lures. He, uh, the Hydralisk does not have an extra weak spot uh, compared to the Gauntalus. He has the same amount of weak spots, so he has six weak spots, and that's seven damage phases. But you s still need three Lures. So go and grab those before you spawn in the Hydralist. The Hydralist has new attacks as well as a passive lightning storm that hangs over him. The Hydralist is easily the most irritating to play against as some of his attacks are completely untelegraphed, like Energy Spike. So Energy Spike, unlike the other Eidolons, uh, the Hydralist can use the Energy Spike uh, as a regular attack rather than only when he lost a limb. And just like the Gauntalus, he'll try to use his shield will as often as possible, but unlike the other Eidolons, uh, he will spawn in a purple orb that will make the Vomvalus immune to damage as well as himself. Uh, and it, he'll, they'll stay immune until you kill, that, kill it and then kill the Vomvalus around him, and then you'll have to kill his shield again. Now, if he can't spawn in the purple orb for whatever reason, then a Vomvalus will basically take on the task and he'll have, have health and shields, uh, but he'll be the only Vomvalus that will be vulnerable and he glows bright blue, so look out for that. Also, after after he loses a limb, he'll uh, start bleeding and that bleed will do toxin damage if you stand in it and it kind of looks like an Oberon carpet that's green. That's what you want to look out for. Do not stand in that because that will do quite a bit of damage to you. Uh, though, if you're just spamming Blessing with Trinity, you, it won't hurt you too bad, so... Keep that in mind as well. Now the Hydralis will relentlessly attack, but as long as you burst him down as fast as you can and not let him do any of his bullshit attacks like energy spike while he's standing up, uh, he'll become he becomes manageable. And this none of these attacks are really that big of a problem for a group that knows what they're doing and is well prepared. Now when he is captured, uh, he will also he will drop several radiant Eidolon shards as well as other goodies and he will also drop the 100 120% slash mods as well as Riven transmutators but I will warn you now that the Riven transmutators he drops are not permanent they are consumable so if you want new ones you need to capture the hydralis again if you want uh, transmutators however I believe he drops two per capture uh but still i think that's a little silly that they made that a consumable rather than a permanent addition but anyway guys the big eidolons are pretty annoying to fight and they have bullshit mechanics that are really really frustrating but this is also the fastest way to hit your quills rep uh you can as you can just do it in one run cap defeating capturing all three of those eidolons i'm pretty sure will net you about enough quills rep to finish your daily cap and some to spare even I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.